Hello. How are you guys doing tonight? So something we need to know here real quick, I'll speak on the path of all of us up here. We need to know your names. So if we go to Wendy's again, we can actually know who we're talking to. So how many of y'all went to Wendy's last night? Yeah, I saw like all of y'all there. But um, along with a bunch more people, which was pretty good, I like that. I feel really weird you guys are all on this side. So I'm gonna do this. <laughs> Thank you. This is, this is Mr. Keel, Eric. Hello, Eric. <laughs> His name's Eric and he, he's a pretty awesome guy. So um, anyways, we're gonna start off with singing tonight. You guys should all know, that he's, he's cool, just, just trust me on it. Um, we're gonna start off with a song you guys should all know. Um, so yeah, stand up and sing along with us.
I just want to start off by saying thank you so much for bringing us here together tonight to just to come off, come to you as one body in Christ, singing praises to you because you are our God. You are greater, you are stronger, and you are brighter than any other. We thank you, God, for that, and we love you. Be with us tonight, God, and let your name be lifted high. We praise you and we love you. Amen. You guys can have a seat. Yes, it's on tonight. They, they, they knew I'm not good with electronics. So. How many was here last night? How many brought somebody with them tonight that didn't come last night? All right, hey, that's what it's about. All right. Well, I'm going to ask the band to give us a little tune or something. Everybody stand back up. I want you to greet somebody tonight that you didn't greet last night. Go out and shake hands, cross the aisle, meet somebody and introduce yourself that you did not meet last night. Get to know each other. Anybody joined the band so far this week? Yeah. Absolutely. So, all right. Announcements. Do we have any announcements? Where's Peter at? He disappeared on me. Any announcements we got tonight, Peter? One announcement. Last night's offering. As we've told you last night, and Bailey come up and spoke. Is Bailey here tonight? I think I saw her come in. Where's she at? She's trying to hide tonight. She's uh, doing a senior project on... Um, change the world, okay? And we're going to take our offerings up every night this week, and that money's going to go to help her towards her $2,500 goal that she's got to raise. And last night's offering was $138.86. Amen. That's a good offering. Yeah. And uh, so I encourage you to rob your piggy bank. A quarter does one meal. Is that correct, correct Bailey, if I remember? Okay. This time, we're going to ask her. Do what? A quarter will feed six people with one meal. You feed six people. Think about how much we throw away, how much have we throw something away today at lunch or at dinner tonight. We waste more than a lot of those folks get to eat. And that's very sad. Very, very sad. And while we take this offering up, um, the technicians up in the, in the loft up there, in the attic or whatever you want to call it, we're going to play a video about Change the World. That uh, That's the email. It's probably the one I got from Bailey, I guess. Somebody's got an email from her about it. So... Watch the video while you, uh, where's my offer takers at? Come on up here, guys, gals, whoever you are. Oh, where's Ronnie Hodge? I've seen Ronnie coming up. Brother Ronnie, you come up and bless the offering as it, before it's taken. Ronnie's pastor at Mountain Valley up in the boonies. I did not do that. I'm glad it was you. Let's all pray. Our Father, we come before you tonight to thank you for the, the wonderful Lord. We just thank you for the many blessings you pour out to us, Lord. We thank you for the blessings that sometimes we don't even notice, Lord. Lord, as we take this offering up tonight, Lord, you know where it's going. You know every child that it's going to feed. You know what everybody gives and what they're able to give, Lord. Lord, I just ask you just to bless it. And Lord, also tonight as we, as we go forward, I ask you just to be with your speaker. It's going to be standing before us tonight, Lord. Just anoint him in a special way. And Lord, it's on my heart like it should be on the, the rest of us who serve you, Lord, and, and know that you're in charge of all. If there be one here tonight who don't know you in the free pardon of sin, Lord, 
I just ask that this, this be the night, this be the day that they begin their relationship with you. Lord, we just continue to give you honor and glory and praise. We love you for everything you, you do for each one of us. In the name of your precious son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hunger, it's a big problem. The most recent estimates say that just over one billion people in the world are undernourished. In fact, eight million people die each year from lack of food and nutrition. Of those, 5.8 million are children. That's 16,000 young lives lost every day. These are not just images, these are people, each with their own stories of hope, dreams, and desires. Food and water the basics of survival that we often take for granted. It's impossible for a person to live out their full potential if these basic needs are not met. The amazing thing is that the world produces enough food to feed everyone 2,700 calories per day. Thankfully, hunger is a problem that can be solved. What if you could do something about it? I mean, really, what if you could be part of the solution? Well, now you can join with others who are empowered to put an end to hunger. Change This World is partnering with churches and schools just like you to provide a way to make a direct, global impact. We have developed a specially formulated meal that is easy to package and requires only boiling with water to prepare. This beautifully simplistic food actually reverses the effects of starvation. It works like this. All over the country, people are being empowered and mobilized to pack meals with others in their community. We supply the food, train your team, and help facilitate the event. You, alongside your community, pack the meals and load them into a truck. They are then shipped to a hungry community. The meals are handed out and empty stomachs are now full. There you go. You just took a little chunk out of a big problem. After a while, this problem won't be so big. Pack food, save lives, change this world. Bailey, November the 10th, is that correct? Here at Midway, what time? Four to six. How many meals are you going to be packing? 10,000 meals here on November the 10th from four to six. So encourage you to come and participate because she can't pack that many meals by herself, I can assure you. Okay? So encourage you to come, and uh, if you can't come, send some money. That's the most important thing, so... If you need any information, Bailey, stand up so everybody know who you are. So if they need any information how to get in contact with you or want to send some money, well, that was quick. <laughs> <laughs> so, I thought we embarrassed you enough last night. So, amen. Um, I'm going to do two quick introductions, and we got a student here that's going to give a testimony just briefly, and then we'll turn it back over to the band, and we'll get Jacob up here in a bit. But Jacob Williams is a graduate from 2009, Polk County High School. Anybody know where that's at? Anybody? Anybody know? Jacob knows. Nobody else seemed to raise their hand. Okay. He left his impression up there, I'm sure, somewhere. Yeah, he says, right, yeah. Amen. He's going to be speaking to him. How many's heard Jake speak before? Amen. Good. I think you'll get a blessing. We had him back in the June for our uh, baccalaureate service and done a fantastic job with our seniors and spoke to the graduating seniors that came, so we appreciate that. Jason Harris graduated last year, 2013, from Polk County High School. He attends Big Level Baptist Church. Uh, he's currently attending Fruitland Bible Institute in Hendersonville, Edneville, whatever. Uh, he's going to give a testimony here. Jake is, are you still enrolled in school, Jake? Graduate. You graduated in June from North Greenville, I guess it was, or somewhere down that way. Oh, okay, down North Augusta. So he'll tell you more about that later, maybe. So, Jake, if you want to come on and help me give you a testimony, then when you get through, we'll turn it back over to you guys. Good evening. It's good to see everybody here, and I'm actually happy to be here. I, it's actually a shock to me to actually be asked to do my testimony because uh, Saturday night I was at Target with my girlfriend just walking around. Next thing I know, my phone goes off, and I got a message from David on Facebook says, call me. Better don't give me his number. 
And then he says, you might need this. And he, so I gave him a call, and he said, well, we're doing a youth revival. He said, would you mind doing a testimony? And I said, sure, that'd be fine. Um, and uh, back in se September of 2006, that's when I surrendered my life to Jesus. And so it's been seven years. That, that was probably one of the most, probably the best day of my life. The reason being is because, you know, I just felt relieved of everything. I, all my burdens was gone. What, what happened was is that I, I didn't, up until that time, I, I kind of had a thought of what heaven and hell was. You know, I always thought that maybe good people that done good deeds went to heaven and bad people done bad stuff went to hell. And on that Sunday, I just got to thinking that, you know, I was a bad person. I was lost. I was going to hell. And at that time, my pastor was, real preach was really preaching. I just sweat come over me. I was just so hot because I just thought I was going to hell. And God showed me that I had, had a chance that I could get eternal life. And, and uh, that, that day, before I could even think about hitting the altar, I was down there praying for God to come and save me. And, and I said that was just a wonderful day. And just a few years up the road, last year in 2012, right before my senior year, you never know what God may ever use you for. But in July month, before I start my senior year, God called me to preach. And I've been preaching for over a year now. I've had some opportunities, and I just thank God for all that. And, and he led me to Fruitland. Well, we got some excellent professors, and I tell you, just in within the third week, it's really hard. But I'm glad that I'm being trained, you know, to go out and preach the word, and I'm happy to be a servant of Jesus. And I, I just want to leave everybody with this, with two questions: If you was to die today, would you know that you would be in heaven? My second question to you: If you was to die tonight, and you stood before God, and God asked you, "Why should I let you into heaven?" What would your answer be? And that's what I want to leave y'all with. To ooh, I have the great pleasure, privilege of going to Fruitland with um, Jason and uh, getting to see. I see some guys from West Point back here. I get to see Chris over there every few days and or every so often. Um, it's a great place to be. I, I, I like it a lot. But um, I just, it's Kaylee, right? Not Emily, wherever you're at. The, uh, Bailey, somewhere, <laughs> somewhere in there. Um, there's a, um, a gentleman who's a, uh, I'm, I'm bad with names, but um, a gentleman who's visited our church and um, he's t actually taking a couple semesters off from Fruitland right now. His name is Charles Winsky and he's from Haiti. And he's born and raised in Haiti and he's now been blessed by God and um, put in charge of, is it three orphanages? Three, three orphanages with um, 500 and something kids. And Come to our church and through uh, through Backhaven, and not you know, don't say this to get back cave big or anything, but back cave and um, the church in Shelby and um, the church down where my uh, uncle used to pastor at we have been able, been able to begin a mission and on the state side to help and support and raise funds to feed these children in these orphanages that are sleeping on dirt floors and you know go days without eating sometimes. And so I think that's an amazing thing, Bailey. You know, to take that last year. Um, senior project and do that, so that's definitely something to be very thankful for and um, grateful for. Our song we're going to do again, we, we kind of picked this out because uh, the theme's home this week, so come to the water, we sang it last night, so um, you guys all stand up and we're going to sing it again tonight.
God, thank you again so much for, for the fellowship and the power of your name. And that we can sing it together and praise it all to you. Because, Lord, it's not about us and what we've done. Nothing we could do could ever separate us from your love. And, God, it's because of your son's death and his blood on the cross is the reason that nothing can separate us. And for that, Lord, God, we, we praise you and we thank you. We love you, God. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys may have a seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. My arm in the top up there. Yep, sounds good. Sounds like it. Well, amen. It's good to be here tonight. I thank God for this opportunity. Thank God for saving my soul. As the brother said a second ago, what was your name, brother? Jason? Jason, I just want to encourage you as somebody who has been where you are right now. Uh, I would stand right here, but I don't want to fall through the floor right there, so I'll move over. <laughs> Uh, somebody who's been where you're at, man, I encourage you to keep going, keep doing what you're doing. I think you're doing a good thing. Uh, four years is how long it took me to get my bachelor's, and I don't know how the program in Fruitland goes exactly, but uh, just just stay with it, man. I know it'll get tough. I know it'll get it'll get hard. You'll want to quit, I promise you, if you haven't already. Uh, but stay with that if you would, and uh, I believe God will God will honor that. I believe God will bless that. Uh, well, y'all, how many of y'all will, will, will commit tonight that you'll be praying for him? I mean, I'll be praying for him. You've got a lot of hands. Uh, I'll be praying for him because I know exactly, exactly where he's at. Uh, Peter, is this yours as well? All right, I'm sorry. I just, my Bible looks like a coffee table up here. i gotta, just got to have two of these to hold them both. I should have brought the small one. That's my fault. I'm not good with this kind of stuff. This just come right up. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry for this dead time right here. Just trying to get set up real quick. Like he said a second ago, though, I, I sure am glad for the day that God passed by my way and saved my hell-deserving soul. I mean, I thank God for, uh, for, for, for just like, uh, just like He's done for most of you here. I'd assume. Uh, thank Him for saving me. Thank Him for loving me like He does. Uh, I can remember I got saved when I was a young man, a young boy. I won't say young man. I'm a young man now. I was a young boy, and uh, at, at an event. I don't know if it was similar to this or what. It was a it was a it was a meeting like this, and uh, there was singing, there was preaching, and uh, I was about six years old, and I had never uh, asked God to save me. The preacher preached, and uh, I, I said I've never really done that before, and I had a stirring on the inside that said, "Why don't you do something about that?" So I did. I went down and asked God to save me. Uh, but many of you know, as I do, that it's easy to get away. It's easy to wander a little bit. The Bible says all we like sheep have gone astray. And, and uh, in my high school years, Mr. Moore was kind of joking a while ago, but I did kind of get away a little bit, truth be told, in my uh, high school years. But uh, got, in, got under some good preaching and some good singing and things like that. And, and uh, like the brother said a second ago, surrendered my life to Christ back in about uh, 2009. I guess it was my senior year, and God called me to preach, and I, I threw in with him. Life hadn't been the same since. Amen. I'm glad. Uh, for the calling on my life to preach. God's opened doors for me. Uh, many of you have heard me preach before. It's good to see some familiar faces here. Uh, it's good to see some new faces that I haven't, uh, I've never heard, that have maybe never heard me preach. I've never been in service with you. I appreciate that. Tonight, uh, I was told we're, we're having a theme about focus and things like that, and I, I decided to stay with the theme, go with that. And tonight, I want to talk to you a little bit about God's Word, focusing on God's Word, the Word of God tonight. And uh, how many of you like to read? Somebody, give me a hand somewhere. Okay, good. Three of you. Excellent. Uh, tonight, how many of you love your Bible? That's a better question. How many of you, I've heard about Bible studies come popping up around here, and that's awesome. That's a wonderful thing. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of Bible reading tonight. I hope that's, I hope that's all right. This is church, right? Amen. Uh, we, the Bible is what we base most of our lives upon, so I hope I don't bore you tonight. I hope God's Word doesn't bore you. You, you should want, you should hunger and thirst after God's Word. But uh, just, just just doing a little bit of reading, my buddy Zach down here, he's going to help me a little bit. That way uh, I'm not constantly turning while I'm trying to talk to you. But I want to preach just for a little while on the topic, like I said, the Word of God. If you've got a copy of God's Word with you tonight, 2 Timothy chapter number 3 is what I want to pull a text out of. 
2 Timothy chapter number 3 as you're turning. Uh, again, I thank Mr. Moore for calling me to do this. And, and uh, thank you, Peter, for having me tonight. It's, it's a blessing. I'm thankful for Thank you guys for singing and, and music was great. Um, I hope I hope each and every one of you come back tomorrow and Wednesday to, 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 to be here for the rest of the meeting and stuff like that. I got my mom and grandmother here with me. A lot of you probably know my grandma. Uh, my mom moved to Spartanburg. Some of you may know her. I don't know. But I uh, thank them for, for being here. Thank Zach and his mom for coming. Uh, great friends of mine. Uh, my second, I got both of my moms sitting over there pretty much. So it's, that's great to have them here. Great to have all you here. It's Monday night. I know there's tons of other things you could be doing tonight, especially this day and age. I know there's uh, 50 other things you could be doing tonight. Some of you maybe want to be doing tonight, but I'm glad you chose tonight to come to God's house. Uh, as, as you'll, and I, I'm not much older than you. I'm only 22 years old. And uh, as, you'll, as you'll grow up, I hope that that desire uh, stays in your heart. So I hope you always have that desire to want to be in God's house. So many of our young people, my age, your age, and uh, so many of our American citizens, to be honest with you, have just totally thrown God's house to the curb and nobody wants to come to God's house anymore. Uh, churches are getting boarded up and shut down and turned into restaurants and things daily. Uh, if you go to a good a good Bible preaching church, you ought to thank God for it because there's not many of those uh, planted nowadays, much less up and running and things like that. So uh, keep in mind uh, that if you've got a good church, thank God for that. Second Timothy chapter number three. I'm gonna start with a verse. And like I said, my topic tonight or my subject tonight is gonna be God's word. Uh, I've been studying this, praying about this thinking about this for a while now, so I hope it's a blessing to you. My goal, I'll go ahead and tell you, a lot of people don't do this, but I'll go ahead and tell you my goal for you. When you leave this place tonight, I want you to have a deeper love, a deeper desire, and a deeper hunger and understanding for how good God's Word is. Uh, when you leave here tonight, I want you to say, I love God's Word more than I did when I come in here. Not only that, I want you to love the author of God's Word when you leave here tonight a little bit more than you did when you got here. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 3 chapter number three. I don't know how it, how it was yesterday, but if y'all want to just say yes or amen or whatever, that won't make me nervous at all. It won't scare me at all. You don't have to sit there and be quiet. Uh, whatever you feel like doing, follow God tonight. Second Timothy chapter number three, verse number 16. The Bible says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. Let me back up and read verse 15 and then I'll read 16 again. Verse 15 says, And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. I'd like to ask my brother, Jason, if he'd stand up and pray for us before I go any further. Yes, God, please. Talking about God's word tonight, the subject of God's word. Now, this isn't necessarily, uh, Brother Peter, this isn't necessarily one of those messages that ever gets everybody real excited and gets everybody very emotional and things like that but you know as well as I do sometimes that's not what we're what what, what the Lord wants tonight so again I hope it's a blessing to you I hope it's I hope it's uh, somewhat enjoyable to be honest with you but uh, I want to I want to look at this verse and I want to pull some things out of this verse and I've got a ton of scripture and I'm going to try to I'm going to try to you know knock it out and, and and not just be reading 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 a lot of it I've got written down so we don't even have to turn but there's some of it I'd really like for you to see I'd really like for you to look at it, and I, I just want to tell you before I go any further that I do love you tonight. I, I love you. Uh, I know that sounds maybe weird to some of you, but I do love you tonight. I care about your futures. I care about uh, the future of my generation. I care about the future of, uh, of all of you in here, whether you believe that or not. I hope you do, and I, I feel like God's laid this message on my heart tonight to give it to you to try to give us a better understanding of how important God's Word is, how important God's Word is. I'll start, this off, I'll start you off with a quote. It's been often said... And it's been said, I heard it recently, that the Bible will keep you from sin. The Bible will keep you from sin, but on the flip side of that, sin will keep you from your Bible. 
Sin will keep you from your Bible. So if you're in your word all the time, if you're in the word all the time, the Bible's going to keep you from sin a little bit. It's hard to daily commit sin, and it's hard to be caught up in sin when you're, when you're caught up in God's word. But on the flip side of that, uh, if you're caught up in sin, you, you're, you're probably not reading your Bible very often. Those two things kind of go hand in hand. So I want to start you off that. But then I want to see what God kind of thinks about his word before I dig into this verse anymore. Uh, I've got four verses, well, four uh, portions of scripture I want to give to you, and I've got them written down so I don't have to take a, too much time to turn. Proverbs chapter number 30, verses 5 and 6 says, Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Add thou not unto his words, lest he reprove thee, and thou be found a liar. Every word of God is pure tonight. Every word in this Bible tonight is pure. Pure. God is not a liar. Amen. God is not going to put something in here that's going to harm us or tell us wrong or anything like that. Hey, every word of God is pure tonight. Then we see in verse uh, uh, Psalm chapter 138 and verse 2, the Bible says that thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Think about the name of God, how, how awesome, how powerful the name of God is. The Bible says that he has magnified his word even higher than his name. He esteems his word higher than even his name. His name. Now we know the name of God is very powerful. Uh, many have come to salvation from just from, from hearing the name of God, hearing about Jesus. And God said, as, as powerful and as important as my name is, I esteem my word, I magnify my word even higher than my own name. Then we see in Hebrews chapter number 4 and verse number 12, it says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even into the dividing asunder of soul and spirit and of the joints and marrow and is discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. 1 Peter 1, 20 and 21 says, Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the Scripture of any, is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but of holy men of God as they were, as, as fake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So this isn't just a book, and like this is a book, and like any other that you've ever read, or like any other you've ever picked up, picked up, or any other that you'll ever pick up in school, or anything like that. This book right here is inspired of God. This book is inspired of God. Uh, uh, somebody didn't just sit down and write out fables, and write out stories, and write out uh, random things like that. This book was put together by men who were moved by inspiration of God. This book is unlike anything. I promise you, unlike anything you've ever experienced. Throughout. And I don't know how many. Of you, uh, we could we could write down, we could raise hands, things like that. I don't know how often we read our Bibles. I don't know how many of us have a Bible, or none of that. But I want to tell you today that this book is the most powerful tool we have on earth as Christians. As Christians, this book is God's word. God breathed this word. He inspired men to write this word, and not only that, he, he this is his love letter to his people. This is his letter to his people. We all the time I want to know. I wonder what God thinks about this. I wonder what God thinks about that. How does he feel about certain situations? Hey, a lot of it's in here. A lot of that stuff is in here. This is his love letter he's written to his people, his people. Now, I want to get a little bit into the message here. The Word of God is important in the following areas. I've got four areas. We're going to talk about them, knock them out. We'll dismiss. I don't know what, all, what exactly the plan is, but we'll dismiss. I won't keep you long. I'll try to hurry. Number one, we see it said, I mean, all this is going to be in the Bible. I mean, I'm coming straight out of the Bible. The Bible says all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. Doctrine. Uh, the doctrine of the scriptures is the first area we see it's important. The Bible is important in, in, in the area of doctrine. That just simply means the teachings are, are fundamentals of the Bible. And I've got a few of them written down here. And uh, I'm going to try to turn. I won't make Zach turn in, in these. I'm going to try to turn to most of them. But uh, if, you, if you want to turn, do that. If you don't, just, just listen. I want you to hear. Uh, 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 now, these are just fundamentals of the faith. I know there's going to be things that all of us don't agree uh, specifically upon. I understand that. I realize that. But these things right here are important. These are fundamentals of the faith. And it's very important that we believe these things as Christians, okay? Number one is creation. Now, that's, that's a big one. I know everybody uh, is, 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 that has their views on that. We, we've heard about that in school, what different theories and whatnot and things like that. But the Bible's very clear on creation, guys. The Bible is very clear on creation. Genesis 1.1. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That's good enough for me. You know, that's good enough for me. I used to get in a little bit of trouble in school. Uh, probably didn't handle that the right way, to be honest with you. I, 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 like I said, I was saved at that time, but I was just kind of, uh, I would use that as a crutch. You know, I kind of just did whatever I wanted to. And then I'd, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says this, and that's called being a hypocrite. You can't just do whatever you want to do and then say, well, the Bible says this, the Bible says this. So, but anyway, the Bible does say that in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And we know, we know the text. I mean, it goes on to create man and animals and things like that. So creation, it's very important we realize that the, that, that the key to creation is in the Bible. 
The key to creation is in God's word. Then we see uh, the virgin birth. The virgin birth. It's very important that we believe the virgin birth tonight. Very important. Uh, Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter number one. I, I promise you, I hope this isn't boring anybody. If it is, I'm sorry. Maybe the, maybe uh, Jason can pick up the slack tomorrow. So you can put the pressure on him. Uh, <laughs> Matthew chapter number 1 and verse number 20. Now, I'm talking about the virgin birth. Listen to what the Bible says. It says, But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord. This is the angel of the Lord talking to Joseph now. While he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take thee, to take unto thee Mary thy wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and shall call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sins. That's the virgin birth in a nutshell. Uh, think about this, guys that are in here. Some of you are probably planning on getting married soon. Uh, hopefully, I'll be getting married one of these days, maybe by the time I'm 50 or something like that. But, uh, you know, we see, think about this, guys. You're dating a girl, and uh, she comes up to you and says, Hey, uh, by the way, <laughs> uh, I'm kind of expecting. And the guy, <laughs> you're like, uh, You better not be, you know. And uh, so we can see Joseph's dilemma here. But, but just the fact to me that Joseph was kind of in a dilemma kind of shows me that uh, it, it kind of helps me to believe the virgin birth. I don't really need much help to believe it because the Bible talks about it. But it kind of helps me to believe, hey, Joseph wasn't responsible uh, for Jesus. Joseph didn't plant the seed there. And Joseph is the one all kind of like, okay, should I marry her? What's going on? Well, then the angel of the Lord comes and says, hey, you know what? Uh, he kind of explains it to him, which, which would be great. Uh, guys, if that ever... If you're dating a girl and she comes up to you, she's expecting. Uh, the angel of the Lord didn't put it there, I promise you. You need to kind of part ways there. But, uh, but, but that, you know, that'd be nice if you were going and, and the angel of the Lord came to him and said, Hey, uh, you know, that baby, that, that I know that's, that's a different situation. I know we've never seen anything like that. But that baby is, well, that, that's in Mary right now, that's in your, your soon-to-be wife, uh, that's of the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost planted that there. And that's the virgin birth. It's very important that we believe that. Very important that we believe that because each of us have a dad. How many of us have a dad in here? Everybody's got a dad. I was talking to a kid the other day. He said, uh, I, I go to church. Uh, my mom and I go to different churches, and uh, I've started going to this other church. And he said, uh, he said, hey, how are you? I was like, I'm good, man. His name's Jackson, one of my favorite kids at the church. He said, uh, he said uh, you come by yourself, don't you? I said, yeah. He said, do you not have a mom and dad? <laughs> and I said, well, yeah, I do. They're just not here. So all of us have a mom and dad. That means all of us have a mom and dad. And, and, and all of us come from our father. All of us, our moms and, 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 and our dads got together. I mean, I don't want to be weird, but our moms and dads got together, had us, right? Well, Mary, Jesus is the only one in the history of time and ever will, ever will occur who's not from a sin nature, who's not from Adam, who doesn't have a, a natural earthly father. The only one ever. And that's important because uh, he, was, he was perfect and lived blameless. For, and, and, and he was the one, as, as the angel told uh, Joseph right here, who shall save his people from, from their sins. That's very important we believe the virgin birth. Next, we need to believe that Jesus is the Son of God. There's many people that just say, oh, you know, Jesus was a cool guy. Jesus was, you know, uh, he was just a preacher. He was just a prophet, things like that. It goes way deeper than that, guys. He was the Son of God. How many of you know, I ain't even going to turn. I'm, I got to turn that. I got to go there anyway for a verse in a second. Who knows John 3.16? John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he gave who? His only begotten son. He gave his only begotten son. We have, it's imperative that we believe that Jesus is the son of God. But then I want you to check this out. And I ain't, Don't ask me to explain this. Ask Peter. He's the, he, you know, he's the smart guy around here. Uh, the Bible says in John 1, In the beginning was the Word, capital W, talking about Jesus. And the Word was with God. Then what's it say? The Word was God. The Word was God, capital W. That's talking about Jesus right there. It's not only important to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, it's very important to believe that Jesus was God. 100% God, 100% man. That's very important to believe that. A lot of people are trying to attack that today. That's the deity of Christ. A lot of people are attacking the deity of Christ today. Jesus is the Son of God. Amen? Jesus is God. One and the same. I can't explain all that. Uh, don't ask me to. I, that's just what the Bible says. Jesus is the Son of God. Jesus is God. That's very important in Baptist and Christian Bible doctrine to believe that. Moving on. Hebrews chapter number 9, verse number 22. I know it's a lot of scripture. I appreciate you helping me up there on the, on the screen. That's excellent. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 9. Graduated Bible college. I don't know my Bible here. 
Hebrews chapter number 9 and verse number 22. I've got a lot of these wrote down, I promise. Just these aren't. I wanted you to see them, but we'll see how it goes. The Bible says that, and, and almost all things are, with, are by the law purged with blood. And listen here. And without the shedding of blood, is, there's, there's no remission. Talking about sin. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. It's important to believe that there, that there was atonement of sin by bloodshed. Atonement of sin by bloodshed. Hey, nothing you say or do is what saves you. Nothing that you uh, can obtain is what saves you. But the blood of Jesus is what saves us tonight. If we're going to heaven, it's by the blood of Christ. Amen. The atonement of sin was by the bloodshed of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Now, moving on, the resurrection of Jesus. Not only the virgin birth. Not only that Jesus is the Son of God and that he died for our sins. But next, the resurrection. Moving back to Matthew 20. And I know most of y'all know this. I know this is uh, a repeat for some of you. Matthew 28 and verse num uh, chapter number. Matthew chapter number 28 and verse number 5. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Matthew 28, he'll probably beat me to it. But the angel of the Lord answered and said unto the woman, Do, do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. Verse number 6. He's killing it. He is not here, for he is risen, as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. Hey, he's risen. The Bible's very clear. I mean, can, can everybody see that? For he is risen. The Bible's very clear on some things that some people don't really, that some people don't really get. Some people try to skew and attack and, and, and maybe take out or change or whatever. Hey, he is risen. He's no longer in the grave. That's very important. Very important for doctrine. Very important. Now, now then we see 1 Corinthians 5, 7. He's, if he's just going to kill it, I'm going to quit turning and killing myself up here. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. 1 Corinthians 5, 7. Let's see. He's on it. That's not it. I must have said the wrong verse. I think it's 5, 17. I'm an idiot. 5, 17. It's hard for him to do a good job when I'm telling him to go to the wrong spot, isn't it? 5, 17. Man, this is nice. I can get used to this. Not having to... 5, 17. There's no 17. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> now I'm just messing with him, right? It's killing me. How about 2 Corinthians 5, 17? I'm there. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Your old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I could have quoted that. I know that verse. <laughs> new birth by the Holy Ghost through faith. We have a new birth through the Holy Ghost by faith. Through faith. When we, believe, when we believe all the stuff we just mentioned and we accept that, then our, then our life changes a little bit. If you've been saved for any length of time, you know that. You know that your life has changed since Jesus came into your heart, since Jesus saved you. We have that new birth. The Holy Ghost resides in us. Then we see the gift of, the gift of eternal life, eternal life by grace. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, uh, chapter 8, 9, For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Not of works, not of works, not of works. Nothing we do, nothing that we can do will ever get us into heaven. The work of Calvary and the word of God is how, is how we're going to get there. Through bloodshed, we already talked about that. So we see, just starting off here, I just want to kind of make sure we laid the groundwork here. The Bible is very important for doctrinal purposes, for the purpose of doctrine. A lot of people, uh, will, you know, and I'm not, I'm not trying to knock anything or knock anybody, but a lot of people will come into the church house. They'll get saved. That's wonderful. They'll ask God to come into their life. They'll leave, and they'll never even know really what happened. They'll never even know really what they did. They'll never know how awesome, how uh, we, we know that verse uh, that, that, that God will give us life and give it more abundant. They'll never know anything about that abundant life because they don't know anything about that doctrine. They'll get cornered somewhere, and, and somebody with false doctrine will come up and say, Hey, did you know this? Did you know this? Did you know this? And they don't know anything. They don't know how to reply. They don't know how to respond. They just say, Well, if this guy says so, then it must be true. It's very important to search the scriptures. We'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. It's very important to know doctrine. And like I said, there's little different, nit, maybe nitpicky things that everybody don't necessarily agree on, but we, I think most of us, if not all of us, should be able to agree on this right here. Because, it, like I said, it's the basic, the fundamentals in doctrine. Now, that number two here, if we'll look back at 2 Timothy chapter number three, <clears throat> we saw that it's profitable for doctrine. And then we see for reproof. Let me see for reproof. Uh, there's many different avenues I guess I could go with this. And uh, God knows my heart here tonight. Uh, this is going to be my least favorite point to talk about. I promise you. I, if, you know, if you've known me for any length of time, 
you know, I'm not a, not a very mean person. I'm not a hateful person or anything like that. I don't mean any of this to come across like that, I promise you. Uh, I've probably never said a crossword to anybody in here, I don't think, unless maybe you've cut me off in traffic or talked bad about the high school or something like that. Then I'll probably, you know, got a little rowdy. But anyway, uh, honestly, this is probably the most, the most uh, I, I could have come in here and, and, and preached point one, point three, and point four. Nobody had ever known the difference. But God put this on my heart tonight, and I have to, I have to, I have to share it with you. I have to. Uh, Proverbs chapter number six, verse number sixteen through nineteen. I'm not going to read it all. I'm not going to read it all. But uh, this is some things that God's not pleased with: reproof, some disapproval. Uh, that's the D. That's probable for doctrine. Then we see some disapproval of the Savior. Things that God's not pleased with. Proverbs six sixteen through nineteen. I've just got it kind of paraphrased right here. I don't know if he's putting it up or what the deal is. You don't have to turn. Um, I'm just going to, I just jotted these things down. A proud look. God doesn't like that. A proud look. A lying tongue. It's in there. Hands that shed innocent blood. Hearts that devise wicked imaginations. Feet swift and running to mischief. False witness. And, and, and the Bible says this was an abomination. Sowing discord among brethren. Sowing discord among brethren. God's not pleased with that. God's not pleased with us uh, running around talking about each other and backbatting. Hey, did you see what she was wearing? Did you see what... Uh, maybe you ride the school bus. Did you see what uh, she was dropped off at? Man, she's, she, she comes from nothing. He comes from nothing. They're nobody. God's not pleased with that kind of stuff. God's not, and, I know, and, you, and you may look around and say, oh, you know, none of us, none of us really do that. Listen, I've, I've sat where you've sat. I've been to high school. I know how it goes. Uh, those that, you got those that are fortunate, those that are unfortunate, and that's just life. That's how it is. But the difference between uh, a Christian who's fortunate is he doesn't look down upon somebody who's unfortunate. The difference in somebody who's saved and somebody who's living for God that, that maybe has a little bit, that maybe it has been fortunate to have great parents and, and parents that tell them they love them and care about them as I had growing up. Maybe you're here, you don't have that, I'm sorry. But I don't, I don't, that gives me no right to look down to you this, this evening. That gives me no right to say, well, just because they don't have what I have, just because they don't do like I do, or just because they don't get for Christmas what I get for Christmas, hey, that gives us no right, no right to look down, to condescend, to talk about people like that. And the Bible says that sowing discord among the brethren, trying to tear people up and tear up friendships and break friendships and hurt people's feelings. The Bible says that's an abomination unto God. An abomination unto God. We need not do that. We need not do that. Psalm chapter number 5. Psalm chapter number 5, verse number 4. Psalm chapter 5, verse 4. I wish I was back in my Bible drill days. I'll be knocking these out. Psalm chapter number 5. Listen what, listen what God's word says here. Psalm chapter number 5, I'm going to read verses 4 through 6. The Bible says, For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall evil dwell with thee. A hey, God doesn't take pleasure in wickedness. He, do, he doesn't like wickedness. He hates wickedness. We see wickedness all the time, all over the news, all over, uh, uh, even just around here in the newspapers, things like that. I was looking today, and I almost hate to even mention this, but I was, I was looking today, trying to, you know, uh, looking in the news, things like that, when I first got to work, and... Uh, I saw a guy, I don't know if anybody heard about it, he's from Kenya, and a, a student, did anybody hear about that? A guy, they, they said that he had, he had killed his roommate and, 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 and like was eating on him, eating his brain, eating his heart. I mean, this is serious. I, I know that's gross, that's terrible, I hate to even talk about that. But that's wickedness. That's wickedness if I've ever heard about it. That's the day and age we're living in. Uh, we're, we're living in this time where, and this, this burns me up, I, I, I'm sure Brother Eric will agree with me here. We'll go out and play baseball and everybody wins. We'll go out and play football. Everybody wins. Everything's cool. Everything's all right. Nobody's going to hell. Everybody's great. Hey, that's, that's, that's sad that that's, the, that that's the way it's gotten. That's sad. That's what, hey, everything's not all right if you're not saved. If you're not saved, there's, there's a place for you. And, and, and as bad as I hate to tell you tonight, it's called hell. But I can tell you this, you don't have to go there. You don't have to go there. Preacher preached yesterday at, at my church. He said, he said the, the Bible says in John chapter number 5, it says that, that he, he bid everybody come, but they will not. It wasn't that they could not, it wasn't that they cannot, it's that they will not. And if you're here tonight, you leave this place, you may come back tomorrow and leave, come back Wednesday and leave, just going through the motions, whatever the case may be. If you leave out of here tonight and don't ask God to save you or you hadn't already, it'll be your own fault. It'll be nobody's fault but your own. The Bible says that they, that they didn't, that it wasn't that they, wouldn't, it wasn't that they uh, couldn't come or wasn't that they, they, that, that they can't come, that, that God you know, said that God turned them away, it's that they would not come. The Bible said they will not come. I've, I've, Jesus was telling me, he said, I've preached, I've, I've told them everything I could tell them, I've done all I can do, but they still will not come. They still will not come. Then we see in, uh, in Romans chapter number 1, if everybody will turn, and I, 
again, I promise you, I'm trying to move on past this. Uh, this is this is a little bit out of my element, even. Uh, but I, I, like I said, I feel like this is what God has for us, and I'm gonna I'm gonna preach it, uh, and 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 hope God honors it, hope God blesses it. Romans chapter number one, and I had a class on this, and it'll probably it'll probably be as quiet in here as it was in our class that night, just because. I want, when I read this, I don't want you to think about what media blows this stuff up to be. I want you to think about loved ones who fit this category, who fit these categories. I want you to think about loved ones, or maybe even family members, maybe even best friends, or or anything like. Maybe even yourselves this this evening. I don't know. I want you to think about not what the media blows it up to be, not what uh, Hollywood blows it up to be. I want you to think about personal. I want this to be personal for you. Listen to what the Bible, what the Word of God says. Romans 1, 18. I'm going to read the rest of the chapter. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven unto all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God has showed it unto them. For the in invisible things of them from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being made understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. A lot of people today are too smart for their own good. A lot of people are too smart. You'll try to share the gospel with them. Yeah, but what? Yeah, but this happened and this happened. No, God doesn't exist. Science can prove everything, blah, blah, blah. Hey, the Bible says professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. The fool says in his heart, there is no God. And change the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like a to corruptible man, and to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Does that sound like today? People worshiping things other than God. People have set up things and say, well, we believe this and this and this happened, but we're going to worship this speaker here because we made it, we can see it, it's tangible, that's what we're going to do. Then the Bible says in verse 24, Wherefore God gave them up to uncleanness through their own lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Dishonoring their own bodies between themselves. I'm not going to get into this. I'm not going to. Uh, it's graphic, I know, but it sounds like the day and age we're living in today. People dishonoring their bodies with others. People doing things that maybe years ago that you know people never even heard of, like what I just like what I just talked about. I've never even heard of that in our country. I know he's from somewhere else, but I've never even heard of that. That's crazy to me to even think about. The Bible says, "Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator." Who is blessed for heaven, amen. I'm talking about worship the creature more than the creator. Worship people, worship things more than the one who created all those things. Man, that's, that's powerful if you let that sink in. For this cause, God gave them up into vile affections, and for even their uh, women did change the natural use into which they, to that which is against nature. Again, I'm not going to get into some of this stuff. And likewise, also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in the lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet. This is no secret. This is a big topic in our society. Does anybody, everybody know what I'm talking about? Do I have to get into this? Everybody knows this is a big topic. This is a big uh, political platform, all that kind of stuff. The Bible is very plain and very clear on this issue. You can see it right here. The Bible says, burn in the lust one for another. Men with men committing that which is shameful and unseemly. Hey, if anybody asks you your stance on that, if your stance is what the word of God is, it's shameful. It's unseemly. It's an abomination unto God. Amen. It's an abomination unto God. Verse 28, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind and to do those things which are not convenient. Let's talk about that reprobate mind for a little while. This is what our class was about. I mean, if you... You don't have to raise hand, but I know we've all heard somebody say they came out. I believe not long ago it was National Coming Out Day or whatever that the case may be, where people just profess openly that, that, the, that they're living a homosexual lifestyle. Uh, I had a professor tell me uh, that, that, the, that the term reprobate mind means that they no longer listen to reason. They no longer listen to reason. If you listen to somebody, and listen, if you have a loved one like that, I'm not saying that they're just beyond hope. Pray for them. Please pray for them. But that, that term reprobate, just, you've heard them say, man, ever since I came out, there's just been so much peace in my heart. There's been so much peace, and I, I have the peace ever since. Hey, God may have given them over to a reprobate mind. It's going to be, in my opinion, it's going to be very hard for them to get saved. Very hard for them to get saved because they hear truth, and they, 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 you think about, 
uh, my, I talked to my granny about this not long ago. She said people used to hide that. People used to, uh, if you did that, you didn't tell anybody. You didn't want anybody to know. It was the worst thing in the world. And now people just openly here. And why do you think people used to hide that stuff? Why do you think people used to push that under the rug and fight it and tooth and nail? They'd hear preaching about it and they just said, no, nah, that, that can't be right. God's against that. I'm not for that. Now everybody's just like, I have so much peace since I came out, since I admitted that. God could have been giving them over to a reprobate mind. I, I hope that's not the case, but I just pray for, if you've got family like that, honestly, please pray for them. The Bible says in 29, being filled with all unrighteousness. This is where it's going to hit us now. We're off of that. Now we're going to, now we're going to hit home here. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, mur envy murder, debate, deceit, mal malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, uh-oh, disobedient to parents without understanding, covenant breakers, that just means liars, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Have pleasure in them that do them. Now I know since we've been saved, we stumble, we fall. Uh, disobedient to parents, mom, forgive me. I've been disobedient at times and things like that. Uh, we can go down this list and we, we, we you know, uh, can plug ourselves in. Man, I've slipped in this area, felt fallen here, done this. But then if you look at that last verse, have pleasure in them that do them. The different, a good gauge to figure out if you're saved, to not, or saved or not tonight is if you can openly sin and openly uh, uh, commit things that you know are contrary to the word of God and it doesn't bother you, you're probably not saved. You're probably not saved tonight. But if you're here tonight and you do something wrong and you know it's wrong, you know what the Bible says about that, and you, you run to God and you say, God, please forgive me for that, that's a good sign you're saved here tonight. That's a good sign that you're saved. The Bible says, talking about that disobedient to parents and things like that, the Bible says in 1 Samuel 15, 23, the Bible says rebellion is as of the sin. Does anybody know what it says of the sin of? Witchcraft. Rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. How many of you think witchcraft is just crazy? Are there any witches in here tonight? I hope not. The Bible says rebellion is as of the sin of witchcraft. Stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry because them because that they has thou hast rejected the word of the Lord and hast rejected them from has rejected them from being king. That rebellion, he says, it's as of the sin of witchcraft. Which everybody's like, man, witchcraft, that's nuts, that's crazy. I don't want any, you know, anything to do with that. God compares that to rebellion tonight. God compares that to rebellion. What is rebellion? It means you're openly against something that the Word of God stands for. Or you're openly against a precept or, or a concept that the Word of God is openly for. You're just openly against that. Openly against that. But we all have a choice. We know that. We know that we have a choice. Whether we're, whether we're obedient, whether we rise up against this. I hope nothing I've said in here tonight, this is all Bible. 90% of everything I've said tonight has been Bible. Just verses straight out of the Word of God. I hope that I hope that sinks in tonight. I hope, you, I hope you accept and receive that tonight. And we'll move on from that point tonight. Profitable for doctrine. Profitable for, uh, or it's important to see some things that God really disapproves of. Not only that, it's important for the discipline of the saint tonight. Or the discipleship. That simply means Christian principles and values. Christian principles and values. A lot of the same lines as doctrine. But I'm going to show you a couple more things in that. Uh, and I'll run through these. I know I'm probably taking up too much time. The Bible says, and talking about parables, and how many of you know what a parable is in the gospel? Parable of the lost son, the lost coin, the lost sheep, things like that. Where God uses earthly stories and they have heavenly meanings. God, he'll tell you a story, something that we can all relate to, and then he'll, he'll, he'll take it and say, well, this is how my heavenly father sees this. And, and for sake of time, I won't get into all that. Discipline and Christian principles. Talking about in Acts chapter number 17, Verse 11, the Bible says, and they search the scriptures daily. Talking about the uh, Bereans, it says that they search the scripture daily. And had favor, they talk about they had favor with God. How many of us search our scriptures daily? Daily. Oh, me right there, Brother Jason. How many of us search the Bible daily? How many of us read and, and try to get more, get more daily? I bet a lot of us do if we, if we were really honest, but I bet a lot of us don't if we're honest as well. Search the scriptures daily. 2 Timothy 2 Verse number 15 says, study to show thyself approved unto God. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Uh, Paul's writing that to Timothy, but I don't think that's just talking to young preachers, Brother Jason. I don't think that's just talking to young preachers. He said, study to show thyself approved. If someone from an opposite faith, from a, from a hair, just somebody that comes from maybe the Muslim or whatever, I don't know if there's anybody like that in here, but if somebody came from just an opposite of what we believe, 
uh, religion or, prof- or you know any of that, could you defend the faith tonight if they were to corner you one on one? Do you know? Have you searched the scriptures daily? Have you studied to show thyself approved? Could you talk about the doctrine that we talked about a while ago, the virgin birth, creation, all that stuff? If somebody were to corner you right here and say, "Hey, uh, did you know that? Did you know that Jesus was just a man? He wasn't even he wasn't any, anybody special. Could you tell him that he's the Son of God? Could you tell him tonight that he uh, that he died for us, that he came of a virgin? Could you tell him all that stuff? I just wonder tonight. I wonder tonight. Study to show thyself approved. Then the Bible says in James one chapter number twenty or verse. Chapter 1, verse 22 says, Be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Be ye doers of the word and not hearers. All of us are hearers tonight. Everybody under the sound of my voice can obviously hear me tonight. Uh, everybody is here tonight, but how many of us are going to be doers when we leave here? The Bible says, Be doers of the word, not hearers only. <coughs> Even if you're reading it to yourself, you're hearing the word. You know what the word says, but how many, how many of us put that into practice? How many of us are doers of the word, not hearers only? Oh, me. I'm not, I'm not pointing fingers on me. I'll point them all at me. The Bible says in 1 Peter 2 and 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby. How do we grow as a Christian, Brother Jason? Through the reading of the word. Reading the Bible. It says, how many of you have, well, older people hopefully, or whatever the case may be, babies, how many of you have babies and things like that? Or little sisters, little brothers that are babies? It says, that as, they, as they desire that milk, as the newborn desires that milk, the, the, it says, you, we should be like that after the word. Uh, there's a there's a lady that I work with. She recently had a baby, and she says it's like uh, you'll be you'll feed, she'll feed the baby for like two or three hours, and then maybe take an hour off, and then two or three hours, you know, feed it for two or three hours, take a little time, and it's just constantly, constantly, constantly. I was like, man, you're really giving me something to look forward to there. So, but it's saying as the newborn babes are desiring the sincere milk of the word, that's how that's how we or this desiring milk. That's how we should desire the word so that we can grow. If you had a baby. And, and you didn't and you didn't feed him any milk. Didn't, it, it would be malnourished. It wouldn't grow. If it didn't get enough nutrients, it wouldn't grow. The same is to be said of Christians, newborn Christians, Christians in general. If we don't get enough of the word, if we don't get enough of that milk, and even that meat, once we get a little bit, get our feet wet a little bit, we'll never grow. We'll never grow. You see, you you, you can see people that have been saved for thirty years, and they're still the same, stagnant. Still, the, they know they know exactly the same they knew about the Bible as when they got saved. They haven't had any of the milk. They haven't had any of the meat of the Word of God. And they're exa- they just coasted. And I, I'm not trying to knock anybody. God knows my heart. But we should, we should desire that milk of the Word. We should desire that. And, and, and I challenge you tonight. I challenge you tonight. If you're a Christian, you're here tonight, and you're a Christian, I challenge you to get into, your, get into the Word. I challenge myself even to do more. I, we can always do more. We can always do more. I'm going to turn real quick. I'm already here. Romans 15 and chapter number 4. I love this verse. I, loved it. I had to throw in. I love this verse. It says, For whatsoever things were written aforetime were written for our learning, that we, through patience and comfort of the Scriptures, might have hope. Might have hope. The Scriptures are not only uh, for, our, for our discipline, and I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, I'm moving on. They're written for our learning, that way that, 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 that it gives us hope. It gives us hope. I, I'll go back, and I'm, I'm closing here in just a second, I promise. We see it's important for doctrine. We see it's important to see some things God disapproves of. We see it's important for discipline. And then lastly, it's important for deliverance. The Word of God is very important for deliverance. Deliverance. Uh, that, well, I'm going to talk about two things right here. Help and salvation. Deliverance. Help and salvation. The book of Psalms, we, we, I mean, if you read the book of Psalms for any amount of time, uh, you, you'll hear things like, He's our rock. He's our fortress. Refuge. He's a very present help in time of trouble. Uh, we can run to Him. There's many songs I'm sure you guys sing talking about God is our refuge. God is our help. Uh, stronghold, all that kind of stuff, and he is, he's a fortress, he's somebody we can run to, but how, how, how would we ever know that if it wasn't for the Word of God? How would we ever know that God is there for us if, if we don't get into the Word of God? Uh, it's amazing to me to see uh, saints of God, to see children of God going through things, struggling time and time again, saying, man, you know, preacher, what can I do? Preacher, what do I need to do? Hey, read your Bible. Read your Bible, it's in there. Hey, the Lord, hey, this altar, things like that, the things of God, the Bible says that that uh, he's a very present help in time of trouble. Very present help. The Bible's specific in that. He's very present here tonight. Very present here tonight. You're here tonight. You're in trouble. You're going through something. I don't know everybody's situation. I don't know what everybody's facing tonight. But no doubt, each and every one of you are facing something that maybe nobody else in the entire room or your household knows about. It may be mental. It may be physical. Maybe, maybe your core group of friends know about it. I don't need to know about it tonight, but God knows about it. And God, and, and, and he says he, he's here for you tonight. He's a very present help in time of trouble. You're here tonight, you're in trouble. We've got a very present help 
His name is Jesus. The Bible says in Jeremiah 33 and 3, it says, Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. A lot of people say that's God's telephone number. Jeremiah 33, 3. He said, Call unto me. A lot of people, a lot of people read the rest of the verse. Uh, it says, I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. There's a prerequisite to that, Brother Jason. You have to call out. You have to call out. But if we don't read our Bible, we don't know that. If we don't get into God's Word, we don't know what to do when we're in trouble. We don't know what to do when things aren't going our way. We don't know what to do when we need to talk to God. Call unto me, I will answer thee, and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. If you're going through something tonight, like I said, nobody may know about it. You go, like, man, what do I do, preacher? Uh, I don't really want to talk to anybody about it, preacher. I don't really want to, everybody to know my business or whatever the case may be. Hey, call unto me. God said, God said, call unto me. Just call out to him. We're going to open the altar here in a little while. The Bible said, call unto me, and I will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Which thou knowest not. That's touching a little bit on help. That's more for the person here who's saved. More for the saint here, I guess you'd say. Now, this is more for the sinner that's here tonight. Is it all right if you come to the piano while I'm doing this? Is that okay? Is that, is that all right? You can take stuff out of the way. This is more for the sinner tonight. We saw he's a very present help in a time of trouble. You can play anything just soft if you would. He's a very present help in a time of trouble. But then we see in the book of Romans, the Bible's profitable for salvation tonight. As everybody's been praying, everybody's been talking about, the Bible's profitable for salvation. The Bible says in Romans 3, chapter number 23, if everybody will stand while they're, while they're getting ready. Romans 3, chapter number 23, it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Then the Bible says in Romans 5, chapter number 8, But God commends his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. God knows where we were. He knows we were sinners. He knows we are sinners. But it says, But God commends his love, his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, God, knowing what we were, knowing how worthless we were, Brother Sean, knowing how... Uh, 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 pitiful, how, fi how filthy, how worthless we were, still died for us. God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When Christ was on the cross, he knew exactly where you'd be tonight. He knew exactly what you'd be caught up in tonight. He knew exactly what sin would be in your heart. All of that, and knowing all of that, he died for you anyway. What a blessing that is tonight to know. I, I, I know myself just like you know yourself. I know what I've done. I know what I've been involved in. And to know that God, knowing that, would, would choose to use me to, to, to speak to people would choose to die for me anyway, despite of all that, in spite of all that, is a blessing to me. And hopefully it's a blessing to you tonight. And I want to offer you this tonight. If you're here tonight, you say, Preacher, you just don't know what all I've done. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I'm caught up in. Hey, if you'll run to this altar tonight, I promise you God will forgive you. You say, Preacher, you just don't understand. Hey, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. While we were yet sinners, he died for us. If we'll come to this altar tonight, if we'll grab one of these men, one of these women by the hand tonight, hey, God's ready to save you tonight if you're not saved. He's ready to help you tonight if you are saved. This altar is about to open in just a minute. Why don't you come get saved tonight if you're not saved? I just, can I get where we live tonight? Why don't you come get saved? What are you waiting on? What, what's keeping you from getting saved tonight? We've heard of people getting saved all over the place here lately, and you're, you're, you're one of the ones that have it. Well, hey, what's holding you back tonight? Do you not want the joy of God? Do you not want the peace of God that passeth all understanding? Do you not want any of this stuff we've talked about tonight? Hey, what's holding you back tonight? What's holding you back tonight? The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, it says, For the wages of sin is death. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. The wages of sin is death. Somebody had to die. Hey, you know what? Jesus died in your place tonight. Jesus died in your place tonight. He took your place. He was your substitute tonight for the wages of sin is death. Hey, but he said, you know what? I'm going to die for you, and I'm going to give you the gift of eternal life. How do you turn that down, Brother Jason? How do you reject that here tonight? God got on the cross and died for your sins. You don't have to do anything but accept it, Peter. You don't have to do anything but come down and say, you know what? I am a sinner. You know what? I'm not saved. I need to get saved. Hey, you're here tonight. God's speaking to your heart. Why don't you come get saved tonight? Hey, just come. Why don't you come get saved tonight? The Bible says last verse, and I'm done. I know it's been a lot of verses tonight. If you hadn't heard any other verse, hear this verse tonight. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Whosoever. That don't mean just this side. That don't mean just this side. The Bible's clear and plain in what it says. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I believe in a whosoever salvation tonight. I believe that whosoever comes around this altar and asks God to save them can be saved tonight. I believe whosoever here tonight, I don't care where you come from. I don't care what uh, uh, financial uh, situation you come from. I don't care what kind of background. I don't care what you're caught up in. I don't care any of that. And you know what? Most of all, most importantly, neither does God. 
God doesn't care about any of that. What he cares about is what he's putting on the inside of your heart right now. I bet God, I no doubt, I bet God's stirring hearts in here right now. I bet you no doubt there's somebody in here that needs to get saved right now. What do you think, Brother Sean? I think somebody's here tonight that needs to get saved. Hey, the Bible says today is the day of salvation. Now is the acceptable time. Hey, what's holding you back tonight? What's holding you back tonight? I want every head bowed, every eye closed. If she, if she continues to play. You're here tonight. Brother Jason, if you'll come stand right here for me. Brother Peter, if you'll come up here for me. I've got two men of God up here. Two men that know exactly how to be saved. Two men that know exactly how to guide you into the, into the kingdom of God tonight. One on one side, one to my right, one to my left. Who will come tonight and say, you know what? I've never been saved. I need to be saved. Hey, friend, today is the day of salvation. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. What's holding you back tonight? What's holding you back tonight? If you take that first step, if there's somebody on your left, somebody on your right, they'll move. I promise you, I've seen it happen a thousand times. If you'll take that first step down to this altar, one of these men will meet you tonight. If you'll take that first step, won't you come tonight, friend? Won't you come tonight? Saints, if you're here, be praying. If you're here lost tonight, come on and get saved. What are you waiting on? Come get saved. Take that first step. I promise you'll be the greatest decision you've ever made in your entire life. Come get saved tonight. Would anybody just raise their hand and say they've never been saved? Anybody? Would anybody be honest with the preacher tonight? Nobody's looking around. Everybody's heads down. Would anybody just raise a hand and say, I'm not sure that I'm saved tonight. I'm not 100% sure. The, the, man, the man earlier, Brother Jason, said, do you know that if you die tonight, you'd go to heaven? Is there anybody here who doesn't know that? I'm talking about 100% for sure tonight. I believe God's moved in here tonight. If there's here, if you're here and you're not 100% sure that if this building were to fall in right now, you'd go to heaven. Can I see your hand? I'm not going to come pull you down to the altar. I just want to know. I'm curious. I want to pray for you. I want you to come get saved. Will anybody be honest? Nobody wants to raise a hand? I, l- listen, I'm going to make it real, 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 real easy for you. I want you to look up at me. If you're lost. You're not saved. If you don't know 100% sure tonight that you're saved, simply look me in the eye right now. I won't say anything. I won't call you out. None of that. If you're not 100% sure that if you die, heaven will be your eternal home, I want you to look at me. I'm going to hold it out for just a minute longer and I'm going to turn it over. Is there anybody? If I, if I, I'll acknowledge you if I see you. Wait till I acknowledge you. Anybody not 100% sure tonight? Just look up at me. I'm talking about 100% sure. Let's get this thing nailed down tonight. Hey, if you're 99% sure you're saved, you're 100% lost tonight. It's not, a, it's not a think so or a maybe so. It's a no so tonight. I want everybody here to know so before we leave. Before, hey, I'll stay here as long as I think God will, God's moving. If you're here tonight. Just look up at me. Would there be one? Anybody? Just look up and look right back down. Look up and look right. Hey, you're here you're here, why don't you come get saved? Grab somebody by the hand, come on down. What, what's, what's stopping you? What's holding you back? I ask you what's holding you back. Hey, you're thinking I can't do it by myself. You think there's no way I can live. Hey, none, none of us can. It's not about what we can do, it's about what God will do through you. Hey, come get saved tonight. I believe there's one in here lost. I don't normally do this. Zach's been with me probably 30 times. I never hold an altar like this. But I believe, I believe I'm honest to God in my heart tonight. Somebody's wanting to get saved tonight, and they're scared. As God, I, I, I feel that tonight. I really do. And it really breaks my heart tonight. Hey, there's nothing to be scared of. The only thing to be scared of is not to move. I promise you, please take that first step. Won't you come see me tonight? Come see Brother Jason, Brother Peter. If you're a girl, grab a woman by the hand. They'll lead you to God. They'll lead you to God. Hey, God's moving tonight, I promise you. I promise you. Would anybody come? Would anybody come? Anybody come? Brother Sean, if you'll make your way up here, brother. They're going to play for just a minute longer. If nobody comes, I'm going to let Brother Sean close. Hey, you're here tonight. You walk out those doors, as Brother Jason said earlier. We're not guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not trying to scare anybody. I just want you to know the truth. Why don't you get saved tonight? You're here lost. Come get saved. He's going to play another few verses, another few chords. Is there any announcements, Brother David?
Before we close, I just want to say I've enjoyed it. I thank you for how attentive you were. I know this stuff uh, ain't popular. I know this stuff ain't, you know, necessarily just woo, you know, that kind of stuff. But I believe it's stuff we needed tonight, Peter. I believe it's it's what God laid on my heart. I hope it was a blessing to you. I hope God spoke to you in some way. These me, brother Peter, uh, brother Jason will be around. Any of these guys, any of these ladies, hey, grab us before you leave here. If you're not sure, if you're unsettled, hey, grab us before you leave here. It'll be the best thing you've ever done. I promise you. Promise you. Promise you. Let us pray. Lord, we do thank you for another time to come out to your house to worship you. Lord, we're thankful, we're thankful for your word tonight. Thank you for the man of God bringing the message to our hearts. Lord, help us to always dig in your word for the answers in this life that we may have. Lord, now we ask you to keep us safe as we leave. Lord, keep us safe as we travel. Bring us back to your house tomorrow night to worship you again. And we'll give you all the praise and honor and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.